Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. And Marianne behind the camera. And welcome to Cavalcade of Food. Mayor, today we are looking at some housewares, specifically a pattern that, as you know, I have a little bit of called Anchor Hocking's Early American Press Cut. So Anchor Hocking is the company that made it, and the name of the pattern is Early American Press Cut. Now, this is not by any means comprehensive, but it is a good sampling of some of the items that Anchor Hocking made in this very popular pattern. And Mayor, these, uh, this glassware was really sold at, you know, dime stores and discount department stores. This is not crystal. This is not high-end stuff, right? Right. Um, this is just common, everyday things, but it was a pattern a lot of people liked. Uh, they liked it so much that Anchor Hocking started making it in 1960, and they made it right through the late, I think, 1978. And then they even would reintroduce pieces after that um, and come out with new pieces uh, or reissue pieces. So they made this for a long time. Um, and a lot of times uh, people call this uh, early American press cut or just press cut for short. But two things I want to say. Some people refer to this pattern, uh, Mayor, and I think you've noticed it, as Star of David. Have you seen that? Yes, I like have. Like in some stores. And um, I kind of get where they get that because some pieces of it you can see. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's a six-pointed kind of a star that is created, which of course is um, the Star of David. Um, but, so that's another name for it. A lot of people mix it up with another pattern that Anchor Hocking made called Pineapple Press Cut. This is the Pineapple Press Cut. Can you kind of see how it's a pineapple? Yeah. Like with this, right? Um, and it has a star on the bottom, which a lot of, um, you know, here's a little dish. You see that star in the center? Yeah. So a lot of people think that it's early American press cut. It has this handle, which many press cut pieces had, a similar one. But this is pineapple, not early American press cut. Although it can be used interchangeably, because really a lot of the cuts in this pineapple pattern are similar. But this is early American press cut. You have the sort of star flourishes here. You have these larger stars around or in the center somewhere. Um, and then you have this sort of center. So this is an example of a relish tray in early American press cut. And what you would do is you had, you know, four sections and a center section. If you wanted to, you could take your early American press cut bowl and put something like that if you wanted to do like a veggie dip kind of a thing. The wonderful thing, Marianne, about early American press cut is they made the pattern so that you could do different, if you could add a piece uh, interchangeably with another one and create a different kind of a, a service wear. So here's a relish tray. Here's a combination relish tray and you know what goes in here right deviled eggs deviled eggs that's right you'll also notice see this sort of scalloped rim that's mm. very much a trademark of early american press cut but even if you look here all these little egg indentions have the star in them so that's another relish tray egg plate 
Here is an example of a couple of platters, large and a small. But you could also get this piece. Now you could use, you could put it this way, and it could be, you could put a dip in there or nuts or whatever, candy, use it for whatever. Or you could turn it over, and I don't know if you notice, there's sort of a, a six-sided shape here on the bottom. Well, Mayor, that lines up with this. And now look what we have, a pedestal plate for a cake or little hors d'oeuvres or something like that. So there's an example of how you can build pieces by, um, you know, putting individual pieces together. Now, the vast majority that you see of uh, early American press cut is clear glass, but they did make colors. And I don't have a lot of colors, but here's an example of probably one of the most familiar early American press cut pieces that you'll see out there. They must have sold millions of these, honey. I'm telling you because don't we just see these everywhere? Everywhere. Everywhere. All right. These are very common. And they're a divided plate. And actually, I love to use this because, you know, well, Marianne, you know, I use them for pickles. Yeah. Because if you're a pickle person like we are, you ha always have more than one kind of pickle, right? Right. So... Anyway, so this is great for that, but you see I have it in green uh, as well as clear. Now, Mayor, we're going to ask our food friends. I've got these very little plates here. Not quite sure what they were intended for. Marianne, when you saw these, what did you think it was? I thought they were a coaster. And you know what? You could totally use them for a coaster. Maybe they are a coaster. I don't know. But I have some coasters we'll show our friends later that don't look like this. So I'm not sure what this little plate maybe was used for. Um, here is a, a small bowl. Again, you could put it here and use it with a, a crudité veggie and dip. Here is another very common bowl. It has three little feet on it. You see them there, Mayor? Yeah. And this dish, this bowl, was very, very common. This is um, uh, often used for candy or nuts or um, sauce or something like that. Now look at this pretty color. Now this is a dish that I'm going to guess had a cover to it, but the cover's long gone. I don't know what happened to it. And here's when you see early American press cut. Here's an example. See how that fits perfectly? Yeah. So here are two dishes that are the same, but they're not the same. When it has a scallop top, this bowl was just this bowl, okay? But when you have a smooth top like this, it's smooth because there is a lid that would fit perfectly on the top of it. And often these lids got broke. So um, this lid survived. This lid didn't, su didn't survive, unfortunately. Um, it's still a nice bowl, but because it has the smooth top, I know there was a lid to it. So, c'est la vie, right? Right. Um, this, here's another piece that I have in color, in green, as well as clear. Another very popular uh, cut. I always called it a celery boat, okay, because that's often what I use it for when I put it on the table, because um, I love my celery. But the, a lot of people call these gondolas because of the shape. Um, so here's one in green and clear. So here are two, what they did, again, Anchor Hawking was so smart. So, you know, here's a medium bowl, and here's a small bowl. And you could buy these separately and use them separately. Or if you had one of these doom, Duma jigs here, you'd put this there. Now, what do we got? Chip and dip. Chip and dip. Here's a large bowl, salad bowl, something like that. Um, 
you could use and I'm if I'm I'm not sure if this would fit on here there you could certainly do this with it if you wanted to fancy it up for some reason make like a fruit bowl or something like that then we have some sort of shallow bowls here in an oval shape I think these are really nice here's a small one great for olives and things like that then you had some tableware. Here is the uh, um, butter dish. So two pieces. Often you'll see this and not this because somebody dropped it. And you'll just see this part. But this is the complete set. Covered butter dish. You also have a salt and pepper shaker set. Uh, they did make candlesticks as well. I don't have any. Um, I thought I did. Maybe they're packed away. Um, but I don't know if I ever got any candlesticks or not. But here's the salt and peppers in Prescott. And again, given the time that these were made, well, of course, you would have ashtrays. So here's a big daddy. This is like, you know, for a heavy smoking party there. And then we've got some kind of smaller little ashtrays here um, as well. Now, more tableware. These were popular, these little cruets. Um, you know what you'd put in here, Mayor? Oil and vinegar. You are correct. Oil and vinegar for the salad. And then here's one that you could maybe use for... Um, syrup. Syrup, maple syrup, uh-huh. Honey. Honey. Any kind of a thicker liquid that would require pouring. Then we have pitchers. So look at this. Again, you kind of have this scalloped handle here. This is a big, giant water pitcher. Oh, you can certainly fill it with beer or other fun stuff. This is kind of a milk pitcher here. And um, you can see it's got the sort of the fanfare there and the star. And then this one is a nice little, I use it for mil uh, creamer sometimes. If we have a lot of people over for dinner who want um, with their coffee, this makes a really a nice extra large creamer. But they did make a standard issue creamer and sugar and here it is. Here's the creamer, and here's the sugar, and there is even a tray that it goes on. You could use the tray separately for other things. And again, here's your sugar bowl. Sometimes you'll just see this. Again, notice the flat top. It's not scalloped. That's because there is a lid that goes with it. There's your creamer, or I'm sorry, your sugarer, and there is your creamer. Then we have this sort of large tray, um, and this is nice for bread uh, or other things, but I use it for bread. Then they even made vases. I have one in green, so actually these two are twins. One's in clear and one's in green. You can see it has all the shapes that all American, early American press cut items have. And then here's a different style of a vase, more of a flared kind of a top to it. Very nice. And then remember, Mayor, I was saying I had coasters. Well, here is the box of early American press cut coasters. You got a set of six, and here they are. And you can see there's a little ridge here, a little lip with the scalloped edge. And I don't know if the, it can pick it up or not. There's even four little raised bars that hold, the, hold your glass above any condensation that might fall. Speaking of glass, here's a large tumbler in early American press cut. Here's a juice glass in early American press cut. Like I said, they did everything. Then um, I did a, a, a video, oh, a number of months ago on snack sets. 
Um, and I think I featured this with all the snack sets. But, of course, they were making these uh, in the era that snack sets were popular. So here you had four plates and four cups. And, sis, you'll notice, see that little circular indentation right there? Yep. And that is just made for that. So it kind of keeps your cup in place while you're playing bridge. Now here is a Lazy Susan. Now it has a turntable that's at the bottom of the box. And here is the Lazy Susan. But again, it's really kind of genius what they did. They took the small lidded bowl. They gave you that. They made these sections, one, two, three, four, five, six sections, and then they just took a large platter, which they were making anyways, and they put these pieces together, and voila, you had a Lazy Susan. And then the Big Daddy, the Big Kahuna. Now. Is that a punch bowl or is that a punch bowl? That's a punch bowl. That is a punch bowl. You could use it with or without the stand. You could use it as a punch bowl. You could use it as a salad bowl. You could use it uh, for fruit. You could use it however you'd want to use a, a bowl of this size. You can see it's a big one right here. And then you had the stand, which if you flipped over, you could use separately as a container, as a large bowl for something on the table if you weren't using your punch bowl. So you had that and that. And again, these punch glasses just happen to be exactly like the ones in the snack set. So again, Anchor Hawking was really on the ball in terms of thinking of the many different applications they had for uh, for one or two things and how to kind of mix and match them into something really cool. So there it is, a sampling, again, not comprehensive in any way, but a sampling of early American press cut. I've been collecting this for, oh gosh, I don't know when I started collecting it, but it was a long time ago, wasn't it, Mayor? Yeah. Um, and at the time I was collecting it, literally every thrift store, almost every rummage sale, estate sale, had a, a piece or two of early American press cut. Um, although I still see some of the more common patterns, like the divided dish and the gondola and some of the bowls, I see them frequently um, out in the thrift stores. But anyways, just a, uh, a wonderful piece of American glassware that was common, uh, but really inexpensive, very unique, beautiful pattern, um, and it was something that you know you could be proud to use. Uh, it, you know, maybe you didn't, you couldn't afford something crystal, but you know what, you could go to your local dime store or discount department store and get some beautiful glass service wear. So anyways, uh, we want to say thank you to our food friends out there. I have to thank my sister. Thanks, Marushka, You're for welcome. working that camera. I appreciate it. And um, remember, the website is cavalcadeoffood.com. And we're having a hot summer in Michigan, aren't we, Mayor? You yes. guys maybe have been heard the fan. It's so hot in here. Um, but um, we appreciate you watching. And if you like what we do, please subscribe, share, and like. And we'll see you again real soon right here on Always Analog. Oh, wait. That's my other channel. This is Cavalcade of Food. Okay, we'll see you later. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.